This is Rob Fox. I practice in Provo, Utah, and am a foot and ankle fellowship trained orthopedic surgeon. And today we're going to be talking about the use of what is called the dorsomedial plate. I've got three examples of those here with the foot and uh, they come in large, medium, and small. Most common, as in most of these plate systems, is the medium-sized plate fits most feet, the really small foot for the, for the small, and then pretty large foot to be able to utilize the proximal plate or the larger plate. These are unique in that this system is kind of set for one of the rare and often missed patterns of Lisfranc injuries and then also the subsequent arthritis of that injury. And these can be used in both reconstruction in the instance of later onset arthritis and also in the acute stage of an, a, a Lisfranc injury where they can be used to stabilize the medial column and the second tarsal metatarsal joint. So some interesting features of the plate are that uh, fixation, first of all, is in the intermediate cuneiform, and then also down the second metatarsal where you have compression holes distally and proximally and then locking holes in the center. The two inter intermediate cuneiform holes are locking holes. And then uh, the unique component of the plate is this allows us to wrap around, capture the medial cuneiform, and then be able to shoot a home run screw into the base of the second metatarsal through the more distal hole of the medial side of the plate. And then a screw that can go either into the middle cuneiform uh, or into the mid just into the medial cuneiform to capture and have a locking screw also that captures proximally. So this allows control of that whole medial column between the medial and middle cuneiform and then also the Lisfranc component. The plate is designed to allow for an, a locking screw or a non-locking screw to capture that base of the second metatarsal. And then it's raised a little bit to allow for the head to not be too too abruptly prominent because of the angle of that screw. So it has some unique features that way. So we've already begun uh, with an incision here that's typical for use of the stabilization plate. And then also for this plate, it works very well. That's a utility incision up the second ray. So the second metatarsal is kind of at the base of our incision, captures the middle cuneiform and then the access to the medial cuneiform. And typically when I'm using this plate, we're going to have a, another separate sort of satellite incision along the medial side uh, with as much space between incisions as possible. Okay, so first, as I mentioned, we've mobilized the extensor. We want to make sure we have space underneath the neurovascular bundle, which we have. And then we want to have space underneath the soft tissue envelope to get that plate up and around that edge of the medial cuneiform, of course, protecting our anterior tibialis. So I've got a little space there, and I'm going to make sure that I have access to that through our medial incision. So our medial incision over here allows me to be able to slide a clamp up underneath and be able to make that space available for the plate. So we're going to select the medium size plate, which as I mentioned is the most common plate. We'll slide it first under the extensor envelope and then under the neurovascular bundle, making sure we protected both. And then we'll bring that plate down. The best way to kind of position the plate is to find your second metatarsal. Position it centrally in that, and then we've already got our joint kind of checked here, or at least we've opened it up to be able to see where that joint is. And I want that line as close as possible, at least as my initial target to be at that joint. And then we're going to put a tack. We've got a couple of locations for tacks here. And the first is going to be along that medial side. So we'll capture, we'll put a tack in over here. And then we're also going to put a tack in somewhere along that second metatarsal to get stability. So I'll place my first tack since I like where I'm at on my second metatarsal here. And I'm just going to check and make sure that I'm centered on it. And I'll just place one on one of the locking holes so that my compression holes are available for when we, push, when we place the plate. And then we'll take another tack. And then this one, if we can, we're going to kind of look and see if we can capture it on the medial side. So I'm going to find that uh, tack hole, and then we're going to fire a tack through that. Great. So now I've got our plate positioned. Now we'll take an x-ray and make sure we like all of the borders of where that plate is placed. This is our lateral image after uh, tack placement. Uh, we're flush on the top, and then our little frog eyes are well away from the proximal joint. We're targeting, you can see a hole there previously. This is a cadaver where a screw placement had been. That kind of shows us where we're going to be hanging, angling towards for that Lisfranc screw. And it looks like we're in about the right place. So uh, in the AP view, kind of what we're looking for is along the second metatarsal. Make sure we're relatively flush along the medial cuneiform. And I think we're really in good position here. And the angle of that screw is going to be pretty much right towards the base of that second metatarsal. So that looks really good. And then our last x-ray, I think, is the oblique. I always like to take a, an oblique x-ray just to ensure that that lateral side is preserved and that we're sitting kind of directly on that intermediate cuneiform and we're flush on the medial side again. Okay, so we like our plate position. And so our first screw placement, generally I like to put in at least one locking screw. We'll start with the more proximal hole and then the, the second hole in the intermediate cuneiform. And I'm using the non-threaded guide and it'll allow for about 20 degrees of conical locking. And so I'm gonna start with that. And then we'll lock a second screw 
which will reduce rotation and also stabilize that proximal portion of the plate. The double helix screws make it nice for hand insertion, do half the work of what you're going to have with a similar cortical screw. Okay, once we're stable there, we like to compress the second metatarsal in most situations. Now, at this point, we're just going to fill in screws. We've got one locking screw proximally on the medial side, and then we have two locking screws we can place on the uh, distal end of the plate. And those, of course, can take both locking and non-locking screws, again, based on surgeon preference. Typically, I leave the distal most hole open, unless I feel like I need it for fixation, just simply because in most cases, we've got plenty of fixation proximally. This allows for a little bit of a transition of the stiffness of the construct along the metatarsal shaft, where you have a screw just proximal to the hole, and then the plate extending a little bit beyond so that you get a little bit less chance of a stress fracture at the bottom end of the plate. Nice thing about this system is you have the option for three different sizes. I like to do 3.5 millimeter screws or use 3.5 millimeter screws in the cuneiforms where you've got a little bit more metaphyseal bone and then use 2.7 uh, millimeter screws in smaller metatarsal shafts just so that we don't have too much of a problem. And I like to use the 2.7 millimeter screws along smaller metatarsals uh, to reduce the risk of stress fracture and then use 3.5 millimeter screws in the medial and middle cuneiforms or in the more proximal aspects of the metatarsal uh, metaphysis just to get a little bit better fixation there. Uh, so you really have a lot of options with all three screw sizes in the system. Okay, thank you. And then we're going to lock, like I mentioned, a 2.7 millimeter locking screw we're going to place in the shaft here. And then we can do the same thing in the, the hole that we have the pin in there. So we'll pull the pin out before we place the last screw. What I really like about this plate is that it gives a great option for stabilizing, as I mentioned before, that whole medial column. So all the way up and out the medial cuneiform. Many of the systems don't allow for you to do that. Some systems force you to maybe fuse an additional joint in the inner cuneiform and, and uh, navicular cuneiform space. And I prefer not to do that, especially in younger patients when I don't have to. So this is a nice way to be able to fuse exactly what you need or stabilize exactly what you need and not too much. Okay. And then our last screw we're going to place distally. So we'll place this and we'll get some x-rays. As I mentioned, we're not going to fill in that distal hole. I feel like I've got really great fixation with these three screws in the center. Uh, so for placement of the home run screw, one of the best ways to be able to determine that it's in the correct direction is to use one of the locking screw-in guides and then place a K-wire in the direction of that planned screw take an x-ray and determine whether or not that pin is in the right place. Uh, we've done that here. I'm going to remove the pin because I feel like I've got perfect direction on that. So we'll take the pin out and then we'll go ahead and drill through the same guide. Okay, we'll take a picture of that. For our final x-ray, we've got, I think, a very acceptable direction for our Lisfranc screw. The second tarsal metatarsal joint is kind of well beyond that screw and we haven't interfered with our second metatarsal base compression screw. My length is a little short here, and I might come back and put a little longer screw in to capture that lateral cortex, but in this case, we know we've got good position for it. And we feel like we've preserved all of our proximal joints, and then again, we left the distal hole empty, but we're right along that second metatarsal. So I feel like this is a very, uh, very appropriate and acceptable position for the plate.